If you've clicked this video, you're probably female between the age of 25 and 40. Maybe you're a single parent and you're working on an access course so you can go to university. That tells me a lot about you as a person. You are somebody who is interested in helping others. You are somebody who is interested in creating a better life for yourself and your family. You care. When I started my access course in 2021, I found there was little information available to help me. This series of videos will give you real examples of my submissions, allowing you to stress less and focus on your journey. I'm building this channel for people who want to improve their circumstances. That's you. I have a lot more help and advice I can give you on self-improvement. Stay tuned, keep an eye on my channel, and together we can all make it. Hi, thanks for clicking. Uh, this video covers Unit 14, the Brain and Nervous System Psychology for the Access to Higher Education Nursing course. So for my assignment, I was tasked to write an academic report which demonstrate understanding of the key aspects of the brain and the nervous system. The report needed to cover two sections. So section one was to explain the major structures and functions of the brain and explain the differences between the central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, and the two branches of the auton autonomic nervous system. Section two was to explain the differences between glial cells and neurons, explain the processes of communications between neurons and explain the role of neurotransmitters in relation to behaviours they influence. So this is actually a topic I find really interesting. So I did um, get really stuck into this one. I really enjoyed it um, and I got a distinction for this module. Um, so you can see a full description here on my screen or your screen of the question that I answered. So do check that your assignment is uh, question is the same as this. I am being told that some of the questions are changing slightly, but this is the question that I answered. Um, so this essay, this video is going to show you the essay that I submitted in full. Um, so stay tuned to watch that. I'm also going to give you the specific feedback that I got at the end of my assignment as well, so that you can have a look at that. So moving on to the report. This here is my academic report. Um, this is a title page that I made. Um, this is quite a basic title page. You could go for something better if you wanted to. You could include a picture. Um, you could give your uh, report its own title. You wouldn't necessarily have to use the uh, module title. You could use your own title. You could also put the submission date, the word count, anything like that. So for terms of reference, I always found this part quite hard to write. So this is an example for you of what I wrote, and um, obviously I've got distinction. So terms of reference, this academic report has been written by Emma Bushnell for Unit 14, the Brain and Nervous System for LearnDirect in April 2021. The purpose of this report is to demonstrate understanding of the key aspects of the brain and the nervous system. In section one, the major structures and functions of the brain are differences between the central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, and the two branches of the autonomic system are explained in detail with references. And in section two, the differences between glial cells and neurons, the role of neurotransmitters and the process of communication between neurons is described with references. So really, I just wrote the assignment question and then said, you know, this is what you can expect in the report. Then for the contents, I um, sectioned out, sorry, I split the essay in terms of section one, section two, and then gave each one a subheading as well, as you'll see. Um, and noted that down here. So when I was creating this, I would just write the titles that I knew I was going to put in, and then I put the page numbers in after, once I knew what page number they were going to be. For the research methodology, again, I didn't really know what to write for this, um, but I wrote, this report has been created using secondary qualitative research collected from LearnDirect materials, relevant websites, and eBooks on the anatomy of the brain and nervous system, cited in the bibliography section, where quotations or citations have been made, references are provided in the references section. Okay, um, so this isn't an illustrative report, so you'll see it, it's fairly boring to look at. There's not pictures and things like that. So do try to focus. Um, obviously you've clicked this video for a reason. Um, really test yourself on your focus here and try to listen through to the end because it, it will help if you can improve your focus, it improves everything. So section one, structures and 
functions of the brain. There is a lot going, sorry, there is a lot of activity going on inside the brain. According to Jay Bollow, 20 million, bi bi million billion bits of information move around the brain every second. The brain is made up of different parts which function together. The limbic system in the center of the brain is responsible for much of human cognition, emotion, perception, and memory. It consists of the following parts, the amygdala, mammillary body, olfactory bulbs, septum, cingulate gyros, ph uh, thalamus, fornix, dentate gyros, and the hippocampus. The cerebral cortex or gray matter cerebrum connects with the limbic system via nerve pathways from the central and peripheral nervous systems. The following lobes are present in the cerebral cortex. The frontal lobe, which is primarily responsible for human speech, motor control via the primary motor cortex and the sense of smell. The parietal lobe, which controls touch and pressure via the primary somat somatosensory cortex, body awareness, taste, hearing abilities and language. The occipital, occipital lobe, which aids vision. The temporal lobe, which allows humans to read and recognize faces, the cerebellum, which controls balance and coordinated movement. The medulla oblongata is found at the top of the spinal cord in the brainstem. It contains neurons which transmit electrical impulses to the heart and lungs, thus controlling heartbeat, breathing rate, and peristalsis. The midbrain and pons are also located in the brainstem. Centres in the brainstem produce automatic behaviours necessary for survival. And then just a note, that's from a book by Marieb, which if you are going to university to study nursing or any similar course, will be really useful to you. So keep a look out on eBay for like secondhand copies of that. I think it's called like, um, I've got it here, Human Anatomy and Physiology by Marieb. So just a tip there, keep a look out. Um, because when you go on eBay, when your course starts, you'll find that everybody's buying them up. So best to keep a look out now. The central nervous system, peripheral nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Then I wrote the CNS is made of all neurons found inside the brain and spinal cord, which occupy the dorsal body cavity. The CNS functions to interpret sensory information received via electrical impulses from sensory and motor neurons. Differences within the CNS include how the brain and spinal cord function in that the brain provides conscious awareness and the spinal cord provides simple reflex responses. Also, the brain is made up of distinct parts which are responsible for different functions, whereas the spinal cord only has one main function. The PNS includes the sensory receptors, peripheral nerves and their associated ganglia and efferent motor endings. Sensory receptors transmit information to the brain from a stimulus, for example, touch, temperature, smell, and pain. There are different receptors for each stimuli, see appendix one, which I'll show you in a minute. Differences, oh, that's worth noting actually. You see, you'll see I've put like appendix one, appendix two. That's because this isn't an illustrated report. So you wouldn't put any diagrams in the report, you would put them in the appendix at the end. Differences between the CNS and PNS include the components of the systems themselves in that the CNS includes the nerves of the brain and spinal cord, whereas the PNS includes all the other nerves in the body. Also, the CNS acts as the central processing unit for information, whereas the PNS is responsible for transmission of such created information. Another difference is in the protective structures that surround the systems. The CNS is protected by the skull and the PNS is protected by the vertebral column. The autonomic nervous system, so the ANS, is the part of the PNS that controls muscular movements such as the size of the pupil for sight and the contraction of cardiac muscles. The ANS has two subsystems, the afferent or sensory division and the efferent or motor division. The efferent division conducts impulses from the CNS to muscles and glands and the efferent division conducts impulses from receptors to the CNS. There are two further subsections of the ANS, which are sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. Differences in the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions are the sympathetic system is responsible for the well-known fight or flight reflex and uses noradrenaline. Whereas the parasympathetic system responsible for slowing down processes within the body encourages rest and digestion using acetylcholine. The system, the work, oh, look, there's an error always uh, pre pre, uh, proofread your work. The systems work together to maintain an internal balance. This is called homeostasis. Okay, so that was obviously really long-winded for section one, but here we go, section two. The structure and function, function of glial cells and neurons 
A neuron is a cell with a single nucleus and many of the typical organelles found inside cells except centrioles. Neurons have tentacle type projections radiating from its center called dendrites and an axon, which is the longest projection or process. The dendrites receive nerve impulses and axons transmit nerve impulses. Then see appendix two, so I will show you at the end. Glial cells or neuroglia are found in the CNS and the PNS. In the CNS, the types of neuroglia found are epi epidemial, epidemial. <laughs> I can't say that. There's a lot of big words. <laughs> I can't say that one. Oligodendrocytes, astrocytes, and microglia. In the PNS, satellite cells and swan cells can be found. The neuroglia has so many functions that it's not surprising the ratio of neuroglia to neurons is 10 to 1. Neurons and neuroglia are different by definition, function, and significance. Neurons are tiny specialized cells responsible for the transmission of nerve impulses between the CNS and the rest of the body whereas neuroglia cannot transmit signals but provide support and protection to neurons and maintain homeostasis. Neuroglia plays a crit critical role in signal transduction as they surround the neurons, form myelin, provide nutrients, remove dead cells, oxygen. So that should say, sorry, remove dead cells and oxygen. Yeah, and provide insulation and protection. Finally, but with no less importance, the neuroglia increase transduction speed by myelination of axons. So I think we've obviously proved that you can have a couple of errors and still get a distinction. So uh, that's a that's a good thing. You could also you don't need to be able to pronounce the words. OK, so the, the process of communication between neurons. Neurons communicate between each other by a process called neurotransmission, which uses electrical impulses and chemical substances called neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitters are released by one neuron, the presynaptic neuron, to send information to the neighboring neuron, the postsynaptic neuron, across the synaptic cleft. This happens upon arrival of action potential, uh, which is changes in chemical or electrical structures, at the presynaptic axon terminal of a neuron. Stimulation by chemical changes in the body generates electrical charges created by internal negative charges and positive potential on the outside of the cell body. The chemical stimuli causes the cell body to become permeable to sodium and thus the positively charged sodium ions can pass through into the cell. Shh. Sorry, that's my dog. It's because the kids are coming in and out downstairs, so sorry about that. Um, so uh, thus the positively charged sodium ions can pass through into the cell, leaving the outside of the cell membrane negative. Go out then, pest. Go. This is called depolarization. Inside the cell, negative potassium ions and, po and positive sodium ions react to cause an electrical charge, which creates an impulse along the axon. Neurotransmitter substance is then released into the synapse, synaptic cleft when a vesicle, the bulb of the synapse, and the presynaptic membrane create a fusion. As the chemical diffuses across the synaptic cleft, it binds with receptor proteins on the postsynaptic plasma membrane of the dendrites. The substance then triggers the whole process to start over again in the postsynaptic neuron, and thus the information is passed along. Meanwhile, the neurotransmitter substance re-enters the presynaptic neuron by a reuptake mechanism involving astrocytes to ensure only the correct amount of information is sent forward. If chemicals are left over in the synaptic cleft, the information will be continued the information will continue to be sent, resulting in excessive, excessive amounts of chemical in the system. So we're nearly done. <laughs> we're, do, we're doing well. We're nearly done. Um, just a side note, this information you do actually need to know if you're going to go on to do nursing or um, any allied health professional um, course, because they do teach you the foundations of anatomy and physiology in your first year. So although you might think, oh, my God, this is the most boring thing ever. It might actually help you to listen to this a few times before you get to university, then you'll just be a little bit ahead. Because um, in my university, we got set an exam for this, so a, a um, in-person exam. So I had to memorize stuff like this. So you'll be ahead if you just if you can know these things. So the role of neurotransmitters, neurotransmission plays an important role in the way the human brain interprets information from the nervous system, 
Common, commonly occurring neurotransmitters include dopamine, GABA, glutamate, serotonin, acetylcholine, norepinephrine and epinephrine, which is adrenaline. And then I put C appendix three, which I'll show you. Serotonin is produced in the gastrointestinal tract and the brain and affects mood, social behavior, sleep and other important human functionalities. Symptoms of low serotonin levels include craving sweet or starchy foods, cognitive impairment, anxiety, fatigue, digestive troubles, insomnia and low sex drive. Conditions associated with low serotonin include autism, anxiety disorders, IBS, major depression, sleep disorders and migraines. So corticotrophin releasing factor or CRF, which is much easier for me to say is a neurotransmitter between a hypothalamic hormone which stimulates corticotrophin. Its main role is to act as the driver of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, the stress hormone system. CRF acts within the brain and links with the endocrine system to suppress appetite, increase anxiety to aid the fight or flight response and improves memory. These effects coordinate and regulate the body's response to stress. Stress can be emotional, physical or behavioural. The most common effects are headaches, muscle tension, anxiety, restlessness, over or under eating and angry outbursts. But there are many. It sounds a bit like being a student <laughs> or a parent. Hmm. So <laughs> the unhealthy habits linked to stress, such as smoking and excessive, excessive consumption. Another error, see? Not good, not good, Emma. An excessive consumption of alcohol or junk food can cause high blood pressure or heart disease, but stress alone cannot cause this. Dopamine, dopamine, like the other neurotransmitters, is made in the body and sends messages using the nervous system. It helps us focus and plays a role in how we feel pleasure due to its links with its pleasure centers in the brain. Dopamine also assists with learning, motivation, heart rate, sleep, mood, and pain processing mental health disorders such as schizophrenia and ADHD and diseases such as Parkinson's and obesity are linked with low or high levels of dopamine in different parts of the brain. In Parkinson's disease, dopaminergic neurons degenerate and although the cause of the disease is another error, is unknown, the symptoms are recognized as tremors, bradykinesia, which is slowness of movement, limb, rigid limb rigidity, and gait. According to Parkinson's UK, around 145 people in the UK live with Parkinson's and that it is the growing, fastest growing neurological condition in the world. Then for the conclusion I wrote, this report has summarised the major structures and functions of the brain with explanation of how the nervous system works to communicate messages around the body, exploring the roles of neurotransmitters and how increased or decreased levels can impact behaviour and other functionalities has been both useful and relevant. And then for recommendations, because some people don't always know what to put for the recommendations that they ask me. Um, to be honest, I didn't really know what, what to put either, but this is what I put. There are many books which outline the key aspects of the brain and nervous system in relation to neurotransmission and hormone regulation. It would be recommended to conduct further reading to discover more in-depth information. And then I made a link to um, Mind, which is a website who has many, which has many articles of information and advice and also offers a range of services for people who suffer with or know someone who suffers with mental health problems such as depression, anxiety, ADHD and schizophrenia. Um, so it's like a charity organisation. In current times, many people are suffering with mental health problems and MIND have recently declared a mental health emergency due to the coronavirus pandemic. This is an interesting topic and is worth further research. And then I put the references here. So you might want to have a look at some of those. Just pause it if you want to write those down or whatever. And then for the bibliography, it's pretty much the same. I think it is the same. And then this is the appendices. OK, so I thought I put like pictures in here, but apparently I didn't. <laughs> um, so I remember now this is what I did. So in the appendices, I like moved information that I had wrote into the report. But I moved it into the appendices because I ran out of the word limit. So anything that's in the appendices will not count towards your word limit.
However, I just didn't really like having to delete a lot of information that I'd spent time um, writing out and learning about. So I put it in the appendices and actually it's been really useful since writing it because when I came to revise this for my um, exam at university, I could still read this extra information that I had written. Um, so yeah, I actually wrote in these in this appendix section, you will find listed relevant information that could be not written into the report due to the tight word limit. So you could also put in illustrations or anything like that. As I was saying, I thought that that's what I'd done. But if you have illustrations that you want to give, put those in the appendices as well. So in terms of appendix one, I put there are multiple sensory receptors classified by the stimulus they receive, and I listed those. So maybe for you, this actually gives an example of, although this might be information that you have in your essay and actually you're thinking, I don't have enough word count, this information, even though I put it as appendices, I still got a distinction. So this perhaps shows you that some these types of information can be taken out. Um, so I listed the sensory receptors. And then in terms of types of neurons, I wrote sensory neurons carry nerve impulses from the sensory receptors to the CNS. Motor neurons carry nerve impulses from the CNS to effector organs. Interneurons found in the brain and spinal cord connect sensory and motor neurons to bring the whole system together. So you would think that might be like quite basic level understanding of how the neurons work, but we didn't need it. So just a little side note. So for molecular psychology, I wrote the study of neurotransmitters and how they moderate behavior is called molecular psychology, which has been investigated since the late 1980s. Molecular psychologists use biochemistry to investigate and explore physical irregularities in the brain to get a better understanding of how behaviors relate to the physical structure of the brain. And that is what I wrote for that. So now I'm just gonna load up my assessor's feedback so I can show it to you. Um, so bear with me just finding the relevant bit that I actually need to read to you, which is here. Okay, the comments. So she put the use of the AC as the content structure for your assignment is a really good way to make sure you have covered all that is required for of your question. Uh, well done. Okay, so there you go. Um, so that was me telling you about the contents page. I split it into section one, section two, and then gave subheadings. So make sure you do that. And then she wrote, you present a clear understanding of this topic evidenced by your specialist vocabulary skills. So I can tell you, I, when writing this, I was definitely not um, a specialist in any sort of, uh, um, but what I did do was go through my course materials and I made sure to make note of any key vocabulary. And I made sure to use that key vocabulary in the report. So make sure you do that. They clearly like that. Um, she has put an appendix, appendix is not used for words that don't fit the word count, which I do understand that. But as I was saying to you, I didn't want to delete it. But then she goes on to say it could have been used for supporting images, data and graphs, which is what I said to you as well, um, that further evidence something you could have written about. And then she put it's worth noting that for future work as this has not been used in the correct way in this instance. So Fair enough, that's totally fair enough. And what that does show is that even though she wasn't happy that I did that, I still got a distinction. So I think this should show you that to take pressure off yourself a little bit, don't worry if you're making some mistakes. Then she writes, your work is very well written and you have clearly done some very good research in the topic and gained a deep level of understanding, evidenced by the way you write and the insights you make, well done. You have included some citations, but you would benefit from having more regularly included to better evidence your sources. OK, so what she's saying there is I need to put more citations in. Um, so for me, the reason why I didn't put a lot of citations in is because when I'm reading through the, uh, the course materials, I will be reading that on one screen. You probably noticed I have two screens already. I'm reading that on one screen and I'm writing it in my own words in another screen. Um, and we don't need to cite information from the course materials. 
So sometimes it might feel like I'm not citing enough, but that's just because I've got the information from the course materials and I use that a lot, very heavily. And then I will just use um, external websites for extra information really, because at this level, you don't need to go really in depth. The course materials give you everything that you need. Um, she put to develop your referencing, use books, journals, podcasts, and documentaries, as well as websites, which fair enough, take that on board if you want. But as we see, I still got a distinction that would have given me extra work to do, which I didn't really have time to do. So up to you if you decide to do that or not. But she says, um, you've produced an excellent response to this unit, well done. Um, so I really hope that's helped you. Uh, well done to you for listening to the end of the video. This is a really long video um, and shows an excellent demonstration of your focus. And my child is coming, so I'm going to wish you all the best in your studies.